Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I'm here to answer a question. Should you buy Pixel Game Maker MV? No. No, you shouldn't. All right, that's it. That's the end of the video. Uh, talk to you. Okay, I'm kidding. But obviously, uh, that is my final answer on this one. Now, there's a lot of caveats to, to um, take into account before you go too far on this one. And first off, this is early access. So this is not indicative of the final product. But as the kernel of what the final product should be, I just don't see the reason to grab this engine. Now, specifically, I am pretty open when it comes to game engines. I understand a lot of engines have a specific niche and they appeal to a certain type of person. And while one person may not like a given game engine, I can generally see why someone else would. And in the case of of Pixel Game Maker, I just don't see it, to be honest. I think you're just wasting your money at this point, and I would hold on for months to maybe even when they're done with their final release before making that decision, because what they ship now is bad. Um, and I can't really put that any other way. I don't I don't see the appeal to this engine. I see the appeal of the idea. And in fact, I was going to be all over this. I was going to do a tutorial series where I was going to, you know, fully cover this guy because from a tutorial series uh, or tutorial maker perspective, getting in early is always great. And these guys have a good pedigree. They made RPG Maker and they made making RPGs very, very, very easy. And on top of that, they bundled in a world of content that made it so that you could get up and going. And they have a huge ecosystem. In some ways, RPG Maker might be considered one of the first online development stores. And that was all a great thing. So if you wanted to make JRPG games, RPG Maker has been there for you for 20 plus years. And I thought they would transfer that over to the 2D world with Pixel Game Maker. And oh, I'm wrong there. So I've been looking at this thing since it was released about a week ago, um, trying to decide how to go about, well, first off, learning it myself so that I could make a tutorial series for it. And you got to look at what the target market of this engine is. This is all about... Um, a beginner or non-programmer friendly game engine uh, for people that want to make side scroller or top down 2D games. And there are just so many flaws here. Now, first off, this one is easily fixed, but out of the box, it doesn't really ship with a whole lot of content. It ships with a bunch of uh, pre-made games, which is cool. The, the, the games that come with it are quite uh, comprehensive in what they show. Unfortunately, most of them aren't in English at all, so they're challenging if you're an English developer, but that's the kind of things that will fix over time. But there isn't this huge asset library that I thought there would be, like a common set of sound effects and graphics, etc. And over time, if that shows up, great. That I think is one of the things that you know will differentiate this from other engines, especially when you figure there are a lot of engines out there that have no price tag attached. But, you know, it's not just the lack of localization. It's just a chaotic mess. Now, I have learned many game engines over my life, and I'm used to learning from, you know, big to small, simple visual programming languages to, you know, C++ code in Unreal Engine, and I'm comfortable with all of that. And, you know, from working with so many game engines, I can generally pick an engine up within a day or two and then, you know, work towards my mastery over time. But, you know, there's generally not this huge barrier of entry for me, even in the really complicated game engines. I, I can generally figure out how to do things. That's not the case in Pixel Game Maker MV. And I am probably one of the most exposed to game engines people on the planet. And I struggled mightily to figure this guy out. And partway through that task, I'm like, wait a minute, why the hell am I going to do a tutorial on this? If I myself am not enjoying the experience and I can't recommend this engine for what it is used for. And, and that's kind of where I left that off. And it's such a shame because there are pieces here that are really great. It comes with a full integrated 2D um, editor, tile map editor right out of the box. So basically it supports a lot of the functionality you would expect from tiled. Uh, there's physics support right out of the box. There's uh, animation support right out of the box. All of the tools you're going to need to do all these various different things, um, they're in there. They're a lot like Game Maker, and um, the big difference is Game Maker has done this in a way that's accessible, whereas Pixel Game Maker has done it as a chaotic, sloppy mess thrown on the screen. But I think the most damning thing when it comes to Pixel Game Maker is the programming. The programming is not easier. So when you look at something like Stencil or um, GDevelop, those kind of things, or even uh, Unreal Engine using blueprints, the whole idea there is to make it so that you can sort of futz your way around to figure out how to learn programming. You can visually build things together and it's a very approachable system. In this guy, it's, it's a mess. Basically, even figuring out where to Dart programming doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And you basically create your programs by going into the objects tab and attaching logic in these flowchart ways to um, 
your objects, but then you got to cross over to another area to do variables, another area to do switches, another area to do basic settings. And then you're building upon a very fixed set of options. So um, you've got runtime actions that are predefined for you. And if those don't work for you, you're kind of SOL. The whole system is just clunky. Uh, like you can you know, move forward or lock objects or, and they're broken down into these tabs and the tabs have no logic or meaning to them. Like it's, it's not like, you know, one tab is about movement and the next tab is about scene interaction. The next tab is about audio or whatever. No, they're under one, two, and three, which means nothing to nobody. It's just, ugh. It, you have to kind of stumble around. You have to work within their system. And if you're making, if you look at this as a tool for modding a specific style of game, Maybe there's an appeal there, but I just, I don't see it. And in fact, when I look at these actual systems in place, these, this runtime action flow charting, it's ugly too. Um, and you know, and again, that's something they can definitely improve in time, but it just, it isn't a nice way to work. It isn't an intuitive way to work. It isn't a fast way to work. It's not, uh, presented in an optimized way. You have to go here. You have to go there. You have to bring all these different pieces from different areas. Um, it's just the, way they have set and broke logic up. It isn't intuitive or friendly. In fact, it's ugly. And, um, you know, you, you just kind of have to stumble your way through it. it these big, sprawling, configurable screens. It's, there's just no elegance to this engine. And then there's more damning things on top of that. One of them is performance. Performance just isn't that great. Uh, and, you know, you can see that. You can download a benchmark and see how this guy works on your computer. And, it's not got great performance. And that's often true of Visual Builder. You know, Stencil doesn't have the greatest performance in the world either. Uh, but it at least does have some upsides that I can understand. In the case of Pixel Game Maker, I, I don't see them. Like, there's there's a lot of work that needs to be done on the workflow, on the usability, and on the interface. And I'm not just talking about localization. Like, this just needs to be streamlined and optimized. And you're just throwing too much shit at the user and make say, here's these kind of settings. And this is like basically just give me a whole bunch of any files and I'll go and edit the any file. So if I want to jump higher, I go to jump higher any one and set that to 495 instead of 400. Like it's basically that's what they're doing, but they're just built a UI over top of it. It's, it's, ah, I don't know. I think here's the most damning failure of Pixel Game Maker as it stands right now. It is aimed at a demographic and it failed that demographic brutally. This is not an easy to use engine. It's not a clean engine. It's not a well performing engine. It doesn't really have a lot built into it to make it really worthwhile. And it has a heavy duty price tag. And when you look at all the options out there, now go stencil has a price tag if you go ahead and buy it, but you can start developing it and have all of the platforms that Pixel Game Maker supports out of the box, which is Windows, um, free. So it's only when you start looking at other platforms that you would have to pay for Stencil. And the Stencil programming model makes so much more sense. It's so much easier for a beginner to start with. And if you want to get straight open source, go to GDevelop5. If you're willing to do a little bit of scripting, um, head on over to the Godot game engine or Duality or... I, I could give you a list of 35 engines that make more sense to me than this one. Yeah, and I could probably keep going from there and keep adding more. So if you're a beginner and you're looking for that turnkey, I want to make a 2D game, but I don't want to screw with all of the, the whole, you know, I just, I want it to be uh, approachable. This is not the engine for you. And I think the most damning part, and the reason why I'm not going to bother doing a tutorial here is I don't see how they can take what they've got here and really polish it into something great. It's just too chaotic of a mess. What they've done is they've built all of the various tools you do need to make game development work, but they haven't made them work nicely together and they haven't made the user experience nice and they haven't, you know, ultimately the developer experience here is pretty terrible. And I, yeah, I hate to be so damning on something, but I also don't want to see any of you guys waste your money. This is not RPG Game Maker. Like they're not in the same vein. This is way harder to learn, way harder to use. Uh, slow, uh, limited in what it can target. And again, early access. So give it some time. It can improve some of those things. You can get more content, better documentation, better um, localization, uh, better performance. Those are the things that get added over time. But when your core design is kind of bad, you can improve that. Now, I know I'm going to probably get a lot of dislikes on this particular video, especially from people who have already bought it. But I would love to hear if you bought it and you like it and you think I'm wrong, 
please tell me what you actually like about this engine and if you've used any other game engines. Now, if you're in a vacuum and you've never used another game engine, it's hard to compare this across the platforms or across the spectrum of options out there. But <clears throat> if you specifically have used another game engine and you're using Pixel uh, Maker MV and you like it, please, of course, do tell me in the comments down below why. Because uh, I know there's, there's this thing where people spend money on an engine they'll defend it because they've invested in that thing. And in this particular case, I I just looked at my 65 bucks, it's wasted and gone. Uh, I'll check out Pixel Game Maker MV over time, see how it you know changes, etc. But I'm just not excited about this engine. I don't, I don't think it's a good option and I can't think of one single reason to recommend it over its peers, at least not yet. And, and that's, that's a shame. But uh, that's it for now. I hate to do such a negative video to start the week, but uh, yeah, that's my final conclusion on uh, Pixel Game Maker MV. And to those of you that were waiting for tutorials on it, I'm sorry, I, I just don't see a lot of point in in doing that, to be honest. I, I just don't think this is a good engine for you to work with, so I'm not going to invest time in tutorials. Sorry about that. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.